Good afternoon, industry professionals, and welcome to another technical update from Manufacturing Happy Hour. I'm your host, Chris Lukey, and today I am joined by our Bay Area Solutions architect, Vinod Anandaraja. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the show. Today we're here to address a question that we often get on the front end of projects related to networks, and that question is, should I use a managed switch or an unmanaged switch? And the purpose of today's episode is to give you an overview of managed switches and not necessarily discourage you from using unmanaged switches because there is a time and a place to use those. And Rockwell Automation as a company does have both uh, unmanaged switches like the Stratix 2000 as well as managed switches with Cisco technology like the Stratix 5700. But today, Vinod is going to give us an overview of the requirements that would uh, motivate you to go use a managed switch. So without further ado, Vinod, I'll All let right. you take the lead. Right. Thank you. So, so like you said, I mean, we're not trying to push you unmanaged versus managed. You know, we offer both. So we really just want to be the consultant and, and kind of advise of those best practices on when you would want to use a managed switch. So the way I see it, there's really um, six key areas to look at. Um, the first is network resiliency. So if you have a machine or equipment and you're gonna connect that to the enterprise at the end user, do you, can you afford, um, how much downtime can you afford, right? So an unmanaged switch has no ability to do loop prevention. You can only have a single uplink versus a managed switch can manage loops and therefore have two different uplinks to the enterprise. Mm -hmm. The second thing is segmentation. So we have a traditional approach approach to segmentation of separating controls from information of having two different ethernet cards in the controller versus a modern approach could use a managed switch to do things like vlans or network address translation the third thing to consider is diagnostics and troubleshooting um, you know i've seen a lot of what i call plug and pray right people mm -hmm. just plug in ethernet devices don't really know where the limits sure. are until it breaks mm -hmm. And that's more prevalent today with the Internet of Things and more and more devices being connected. Um, so what managed switches offer you is that ability for diagnostics. So it, especially our Stratix switches integrated to Logix and Vue HMIs, the ability for controls engineer, engineer to know exactly where the issue is and get you back up and running quickly. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing that a managed switch offers is prioritization. So a Stratix switch out of the box um, prioritizes things like I.O. control, motion control, and safety control, things we need that are important in manufacturing, versus an IT switch that prioritizes voice and video. The fifth thing to consider uh, for managed switches is security. So if you have some kind of global security policy at the end user, the ability to bring that down to the machine or equipment level using things like access control lists, you need a managed switch to do that. And finally, the sixth thing is what I call time synchronization. And, and one such application for that would be motion control, right? So if you, have a, if you have a switch in between your motion drives and your controller, it's important to have a switch that is capable of IEEE 1588, which gives you that synchronization of 100 nanoseconds across all of your devices. So you covered a pretty wide gamut there, anything mm -hmm. from basically network resiliency to time synchronization. Is it you know some combination of these that make a managed switch a requirement, or is it when any one of these is the case that someone should be using a managed switch? It's really any one of these, and like I said, we're not trying to push you from one or the other, but these are the things that only a managed switch offers. So if that becomes a part of the requirement, then those are the things that um, are gonna guide you to a managed switch. Got it. Now, to be honest, one of the common reasons that you know someone might decide to use an unmanaged switch is because they perceive that that's the only way to save cost. Are there ways to save cost when using a managed switch? Yeah, there are. I mean, we, we totally understand that you know a lot of machine builders, they want to have the lowest cost solution as well as sta have a standard, right? Standardized on something. Um, but like I said, with the evolving requirements of the end user and the Internet of Things and more devices, it, you really need to know where that, that cutoff is. Mm -hmm. And um, there are ways to balance that cost out. So we'll show you, um, and that really comes down to the network architecture on the machine or equipment itself. Mm -hmm. So there's three main architectures to look at. Do you have something that I can write? Uh, yeah, we should have something here. Might as well use one of these. Uh, the famous napkin note. All right, 
So the first topology to look at is your traditional star topology, right? That mm -hmm. we all know and love. So star topology is your is is your default topology at the machine or equipment level, and it really just involves whether it's unmanaged or managed switch being the center of that topology, and then you have devices hanging off of it and. The key is that every device requires its own Ethernet port. But now if you look at some of the other new topologies available in, um, in our, our architectures today, which, where'd you get that from? Hey, I'm the host, I gotta be prepared. Okay, reading my mind. Um, so the other, another topology to consider is something called a linear topology. So in a linear topology, you have the managed switch, and then off of that, you have a linear trunk that goes in and out of each device, mm -hmm. right? And then the final topology to consider is a ring topology, and we call this device level ring. Device level ring, um, first of all, our static switches, certain models have the ability to have device level ring go in and out of the switch. Mm -hmm. And with it, if there is a break in that ring, your ring converges within three milliseconds, and you have the diagnostics and logics and view HMIs to know exactly where that pain point is. But the key thing is in both a linear or a DLR, you, um, every device does not require its own ethernet port on the managed switch. So therefore you can scale that managed switch down and reduce the cost of your overall architecture while still having that managed switch there um, to achieve those six items we discussed. Sure, uh, and that makes a lot of sense. And um, to summarize, if I may, you know what we covered today was there are a number of requirements that would uh, motivate you to go with a managed switch. But even with going with a managed switch, keep in mind that there are ways to achieve cost reduction through the various network uh, topologies yeah. that you discussed that would allow you to keep your system competitive as well. So with that, we thank you for joining us for another episode of Manufacturing Happy Hour. Stay innovative, stay thirsty, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.